let's talk about um, chapter 10, okay? Uh, comparing Earth and Venus together. Okay, so um, there we go. Venus and Mars, comparing them to Earth. Uh, so we want to talk about the nearest planets to us, Venus and Mars. They are on opposite sides of Earth. Talk about the geology of Venus, the atmosphere of Venus, the ge geology of Mars, and the prospect of water and life on Mars. And then the divergent planetary evolution, why they are so different from us. So, um, if you think about the Moon and Mercury, they're geologically dead. There isn't a lot going on there, um, not a lot of progress being made. They're covered in craters. Um, so we don't see any evidence of their craters being erased over time. Earth and Venus and Mars, though, they're more active, more interesting, but Venus and Mars are very different worlds from Earth. Uh, we're going to summarize the findings of robots and what they've learned and taught us about uh, what's going on in these places. Kind of weird we live in this universe with these things that you can walk around on. Uh, okay, so overview. Uh, we want to explain why it's difficult to learn about Venus. It's covered in clouds. Uh, talk about the history of our interest in Mars. Um, and then compare the basic physical properties of these planets. So Mars and Venus are some of the brightest objects in the sky. Mars is about one and a half AU from the sun. Venus is about three quarters of an AU uh, from the sun. The closest Venus gets though, they uh, in the orbits to Earth is pretty close, 40 million kilometers. Uh, you could probably jog that in a lifetime, maybe, no? Venus is bright, very bright. Even with a small telescope, you can see the phases of Venus, just like the phases of the moon. And it shows that Venus must uh, orbit the sun and not the Earth. And that was the, the evidence uh, that uh, Galileo and Copernicus had to work with for the uh, Galileo, especially for the Copernican revolution. We can't see the surface of Venus because it's covered in clouds. And so we've got this nice uh, picture of Venus here. And you can see how difficult it is to see its surface because it's just a cloudy planet all the time. Imagine that, just cloudy, cloudy all the time. Mars, we can see it from Earth, okay? We can see Earth. Uh, the resolution is not enough to see small details, but we can actually just see that there are different areas of the surface. Um, there you can see this is from an Earth-based telescope. You can see this with a decent uh, amateur telescope. Uh, take a picture like this. Um, you can go on Instagram and see some people doing that. So Mars takes about 24 hours to orbit um, itself uh, one day, so it's similar. It's tilted at 25 degrees, which is similar to Earth, same tilt. So it has seasons like Earth, but since it takes two years to go around the sun compared to Earth, one Earth year, um, the seasons last about six months instead of three months. Um, we can use radar in order to see through the clouds of Venus's surface, and we see that it rotates very slowly. It takes 243 days to rotate. It's rotating in retrograde, which means it goes backwards. It's rotating backwards compared to its orbit. Um, so if it if it's coming towards you right now, it would rotate in the same direction, but in this case, as it comes towards you, it's rotating in the opposite direction. So, uh, man, I can't really show you. It just rotates backwards. Um, so its day, 243 Earth days to have one rotation, is longer than its year. It takes longer for it to rotate than it does to go around the sun. That's crazy. Probably it was hit with something which caused it to have this orbit. Um, Venus and Earth, they're similar in almost every way apart from their atmospheres. The surface pressure on Venus is about a hundred times that on Earth because the, there's so much gas, so much atmosphere, the weight of it pushing on you um, is a hundred times what it is here on Earth. And the surface is over 800 degrees Fahrenheit or 700 Kelvin, so it's very, very hot all the time. What do you cook pizza at? Like 300 degrees, 325, 350, maybe 450 if you got some crazy frozen pizza. So that's twice the temperature of a pizza oven all the time on the surface of the planet. Our main challenge as an astronomer, since that's what we all are, uh, is to understand why the atmospheres are so different. Why is Venus' atmosphere so different from Earth and Mars? How did it get such a thick atmosphere? Um, Mars, on the other hand, is a small planet. It's like 11% of the mass of the Earth. That's tiny. It's a very thin atmosphere. It probably had a thick atmosphere and oceans in the past. Um, it's gone now. It's dead. It's possible life developed during that time, and it's possible that life even continues to exist uh, today, but we're not quite sure. Um, we're looking for that all the time. Okay, so Venus, we want to describe the features on the surface of Venus. We want to explain 
craters and tells us how the age of the surface uh, from those craters, compare tectonic activity and volcanoes on Venus, compare those to Earth, um, and then explain why the surface of Venus is inhospitable to human life. So nearly 50 spacecraft have been launched on intended to go to Venus, only half were successful. Um, the mission to uh, the Soviet, or sorry, not the mission, the Soviet Union launched the most, most missions to Venus, um, and the first to land actually died after 23 minutes because of the extreme pressures and temperatures. Um, it just couldn't uh, uh, survive. Um, but the um, Pioneer Venus mission took a radar with it, orbited Venus instead of landed on Venus, and then took a radar image of it. But the best map comes from the Magellan spacecraft, and there's this nice, beautiful image of the surface of Venus without the clouds. So we can see through the clouds with um, radar, and this is what we see. Um, Venus probably looked like what Earth would look like without um, wind and rain. So uh, Venus, the surface of it, there's very little wind on the surface. There's no water or ice. It's just hot and dry. Um, and we can see that the surface of Venus has been active. Um, and we can see how active it's been, and that gives us an estimate of the age of the, of the planet, of its surface. So 75% of the surface is lava, like on the moon, um, lunar maria. The, this all comes from just widespread lava eruptions. That means the center of Venus is still very hot and oozing out onto the surface all the time. Uh, because of that convection. The largest continent on Venus, it's broken up into continents just like uh, um, Earth. And the largest one is Aphrodite, which is about the size of Africa. Um, these are some cool pictures. The one on the right, is this crater is named after Gertrude Stein. So these are just craters on the surface of Venus. By counting the craters and the, the sizes of them, uh, we can see that actually most of the small comets get burned up by the Venus's thick atmosphere, but the larger ones make it through. And by estimating how many large, counting how many large craters there are, we can estimate that the surface is between 300 and 600 million years old, which means that Venus has a pretty active um, surface and is, uh, has persistent geologic activity. Like Earth, Venus is covered in volcanoes. Um, and uh, there's some pictures here of volcanoes and the tectonic activity. And there's also a nice picture from the surface of Venus here from one of the uh, uh, spacecraft that landed. So um, the atmosphere of Venus is ridiculously thick. Uh, we want to describe the composition of it and the structure, explain the greenhouse effect and how it's led to high temperatures on Venus. Um, the atmosphere of Venus is 96, 96% uh, so this is Venus here, 96% carbon dioxide. So is Mars basically, but Mars's atmosphere is very thin. So even though they have the same basic compositions, Venus has a ton more atmosphere than Mars. Earth has a tiny amount of carbon dioxide now because we've buried it underground. Life has eaten it, spit out oxygen and so on. Um, so this is, uh, this is crazy. Um, it's a very thick carbon dioxide atmosphere. Venus's surface is perpetually tinted, like sepia <laughs> tone, um, like a sunset all the time, and that's because it's got such a thick atmosphere. It's very hot and dry and calm on the surface. Everywhere, the weather's the same everywhere. It's San Diego on steroids, but cloudy, so not a great example. Um, this is because it has a very thick atmosphere. The greenhouse effect, the um, ability of the atmosphere to hold on to heat, uh, keeps Venus's surface at 900 degrees Fahrenheit. That's insanely hot, 850 degrees. It may have been like Earth at one point, um, but slowly over time, the uh, atmosphere got out of balance and built up a, so for example, maybe life didn't form quick enough and we didn't get rid of the carbon dioxide on Venus and therefore heat kept building up and then you had a runaway greenhouse effect. So the runaway greenhouse effect is something that happens over time. It's an evolution. It's not just suddenly it's hot. It takes a while. Right now we have a stable greenhouse effect where the amount of heat coming in from the sun is balanced by the amount of heat radiating back out into space. So we're in kind of an equilibrium. Uh, well, technically we're out of equilibrium now because uh, we have an unbalanced amount of carbon dioxide then our system can manage. So we're getting excess heat. So it's called global warming, this effect of um, the, the Earth just holding on to more sunlight than it has in the past and faster than we can get rid of it back into space. 
Um, so that's, or use it in some way. So that's a problem. Uh, we don't know if or when Earth will experience that naturally, but um, uh, we can also, we can kind of give it an encouragement. Um, but if it does happen here on Earth, then Venus is an example of what uh, is possible. Okay, so uh, the geology of Mars here. Uh, we want to talk about the main missions that have explored Mars, explain what we have learned by looking at meteorites from Mars, describe the various features found on the surface of Mars, and compare the volcanoes and canyons on Mars with those on Earth. We want to describe the general conditions on the surface of Mars. So um, the main, oops, so the main, let me go here, main things here, um, this is Mars, this is a Hubble image of Mars, um, pretty cool picture. Um, the fact that you can take a picture like that with a telescope from Earth to see its uh, ice caps and everything. Um, the spacecraft exploration, there's a bunch of information here. I'm not going to quiz you on any of that, but we've got the Pathfinder took these pictures of Mars. How cool is that to be able to see the surface of another planet? Um, Gale, uh, sorry, this is Victoria Crater. Um, this is where the uh, rover Opportunity uh, was at the rim of this thing taking a picture which is really cool. Some meteorites we've found landed on for example in Antarctica uh, when something hits Mars boom it can eject rocks out into space and some of those can end up on Earth. Um, that's really rare to happen but we we can definitely find that. Uh, this is again radar image of uh, Mars and you can see on the left hand image um, a ton of large well maybe four four very large volcanoes and then some others pretty large volcanoes there. Um, those volcanoes are uh, some of the biggest in, actually the biggest in the solar system. Okay, um, this is Olympus Mons. It is the biggest volcano in the solar system. It is so big that if you were on the surface of it, you wouldn't even tell you're on a, if you're at the top of it, it's like 40 miles. So if you stand up there, you cannot see the edge of it. So you wouldn't be able to tell that you're on a, on a volcano. You're not, you won't, like, if you go to Mount Everest, you could tell that you're on a peak. You can't hear. It's so big. Um, and then there's Valles, Mar Ver uh, Valles Marineris, the largest canyon system in the solar system. Uh, amazing thing. 3,000 kilometers wide, 8 kilometers deep. It's a huge um, thing. It's not a canyon because it was not cut by running water. So it's a little bit of a misnomer. Um, so we think, uh, um, from tectonic uh, motions that the, the Mars just kind of cracked <laughs> cracked open. Okay, so read about that, it's, a, it's amazing. There's landslides on there, you can see from the surface the different probes that have landed on it. It's kind of amazing to think about that we can send robots to another planet, land on it. In this picture you can see snow uh, basically on the surface of it. Um, in winter, winter on Mars, it's not really snow, it's more like a frost, but just incredible. Here you can see um, water uh, melting. Um, it, oh, I'm sorry, not this image. This image is the dust devils. Okay, so this is cool. The wind, the wind carving little tracks in the dust. That's so cool. Um, okay, so again, I can't. I'm not really going to quiz you on a lot of this stuff. It's just general kind of information to contextualize uh, planetary science. So we want to discuss the main mission, uh, didn't I just do that? This one, okay. So we want to describe the general composition of the atmosphere of Mars. We want to explain what we know about the ice caps and how we know it and describe the evidence for the presence of water in the past history of Mars and then summarize the evidence for and against the possibility of life on Mars. So um, this is, we can see erosion on Mars. So there's these features, polar ice caps, look at this. So that's water, frozen water, all around the planet on the ice caps. Um, so you could put a, a base there and uh, uh, harvest the water if you needed to. Um, but it's uh, uh, carbon dioxide mostly. Um, so you'd have to uh, do some processing to, to get water out of it. Um, this is a really cool thing. So this is these two pictures. There's a slight difference. Um, in this region compared to in this image where you can see the, the ice evaporating um, which is frozen water so um, 
there's plenty of evidence of water on Mars, frozen right now. At, if it was warmer in the past, it would have been liquid. There would have been oceans all over. Um, it's kind of amazing. We see evidence of, you know, rivers and, I mean, look at this. It's clearly water creating uh, things like, and over here you can clearly see streams and rivers and lakes and things. So uh, where to go? And here you can see water. When it melts, it streams these dark areas. It's, it streams down. Um, and uh, I mean, that's just kind of amazing. Uh, more liquid water. It melts and creates these dark streaks during the summer. Um, so we definitely know that there's water on Mars. This is cool. There's this famous picture that was like, oh, there's Martians on Mars, and they made this sculpture. They took another picture of it, and it's just a blob. OK, uh, so climate change on Mars. Obviously, something happened and froze the thing. So instead of a runaway greenhouse effect, we have a runaway um, you know, we have a runaway uh, refrigerator effect. So something happened, the atmosphere evaporated, puffed off, disappeared, the sun blew it away over time, uh, the solar wind, and there's not enough atmosphere to keep it warm enough so it has the opposite effect. So this is kind of amazing. And We've been looking for life, we expect to find life, it's definitely possible, um, but it's possible that Mars just never had a chance to develop life before it froze. Uh, so um, we think that there's life, probably, but it's also possible there isn't, <clears throat> and we're still looking. Okay, so the divergent planetary evolution is we want to compare the evolution of Venus, Earth, and Mars, and uh, there's not a there's just this like two paragraphs here. Basically, Venus runaway greenhouse effect super hot, Mars runaway refrigerator effect super cold, Earth somehow threaded the needle had a nice environment for life to start, and then changed the atmosphere so that it wasn't scorching hot or frozen. And now we have this wonderful kind of temperate planet with liquid water on its surface. Um, it's kind of amazing. So that's what you need to know about uh, this. I guess I'll see you guys later.